Okay, are we live? I think we're live, guys. All right, cool. So what I want to do real fast is, for some reason, my, my screens are kind of wigging out on me, so bear with me here. I know what I'm doing wrong. Hang on. Just getting some screen organization going on here, and I will fix all of this in short order. Okay, so here's what I was thinking. Hang on, I'm working double time here. I'm dealing with two screens at the same time. This is not going to be one of the, hey guys, I see comments in there. I'm gonna be back and forth. I'm actually setting up so I can see your comments on this screen. So bear with me in my temporary folly here while I try to figure out why my other screen is not working. You'd think a guy who was a pro, right? <laughs> Thanks guys. You'd think a guy who was a pro would have these things figured out before he went live, but in real life, that's, that's not actually how it works. It's not actually how it works. All right, so here's, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to my YouTube channel on here, okay? YouTube.com slash Gavin Sign. I have two channels. The other one is my business channel, and uh, it is YouTube.com forward slash Sign Studios, and that's kind of my adventure channel. I'm gonna be posting more reviews and stuff like that. We're gonna talk about that a little bit today. But the first thing I'm gonna do is go find my own live uh, feed here so I can watch you guys in the chat room. And when this is no longer live, I will probably cut this part off. I'm taking the hair. <laughs> I was actually gonna say my mane is a mess right now. It needs to be cut and it's kind of crazy today. But uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so here's the problem. I'm trying to find my own live video on my own YouTube channel. Okay, here we go, here we go. Let me go to the control room. Live control room, that sounds good. See, I'm looking at this screen over here. I'm on this screen, okay? So I'm gonna go to the live control room and see what's happening there. And status of my stream is good. Where's the chat room? Aha, live chat, that's what I need. And I wonder if I can just open that. Pop out chat, look at that. How about this? See if that works, all right, cool. So now I have this window that is you guys in the chat room. And I have my other workspaces because what I'm going to show you today, I talk a lot. All right, so now that we got everything working, let's, let's consider this the start of the video that I will probably cut this to. This is for those of you that want to get your message. We want to get exposure, right? Right, everybody wants to be like exposed. Whoa, okay, anyways, <laughs> that's a little tacky. Um, We want to get exposure for our message, whether it's, whether it's in business or exposing police corruption or anything like that. And I, I think people struggle and I want to do, I do a lot of like photo workshops and training workshops. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you guys quickly tonight. I want to go home. Dinner is waiting. My kids are waiting. But I'm trying to get as many messages together to answer as many questions as I can because I will only be here for so long. I can only do so much. And the real goal is, is you guys. I want to empower your message so that you guys can expand your message and connect with people. I think Sandra made steak with peppers for dinner. So I'm, I'm gonna try to keep this short. Although I did get to spend most of the day with my kids. I've just been under the weather. I only came into the studio a couple hours ago. I've just been under the weather for like two weeks now and I'm feeling somewhat better and I have a little bit of energy, but it's been on and off today. Okay, so it's good. I, I get to spend more time at home with my kids than almost anybody because my job is flexible and so it's great. I'm gonna stop looking here and I'm gonna look over here at the chat room while I work. Here's what I'm gonna do, guys. This is the video, this is the timeline. What you're looking at right now, did you guys see my video this week of the cop? This cop, Officer Patrick Kennedy. He's been made famous a few times in my videos and he has the unique ability to try to give smart aleck answers and to be really, really bad at it when he, because he doesn't like it that I call him out. All right, so you guys saw this video. What I want to show you today, I talk a lot about the message. Go to the education section of this channel if you want to learn about messaging. Here's what I'm going to show you today. And that is, 
how to make a video, how do you edit a video. I'm not here to show you specifically how to use editing software, okay? And just a quick overview, I'm using Adobe editing software. I'm using the professional of the professional software here, okay? The best editing software, the best video software, because this is the business that I'm in, it's photo and video, all right? That does not mean you need the best software. In fact, the best software is often harder to work with and takes more time to learn. So for example, this is Premiere Pro. All this chaos on multiple screens that you're looking at is what I'm dealing with when I'm making a video. All right? And it looks kind of confusing, but you get used to it. So I'm gonna explain basically how we cut together a good video. Sometimes with a video, right? Like police abuse or police are shooting or abusing or attacking you, right? Sometimes it's just so intense that it's viral automatically. But there's huge amounts of things happening in the world. There's huge amounts of abuse. There's getting to be so much police abuse that it's actually hard to even get attention to police abuse. And so at some point you need to be able to take things, especially longer videos, and not edit them for dishonesty because I'm, I'm a firm believer in being honest, but to edit them so people can consume them. Sometimes if it's a journalistic integrity thing, I will actually post the whole video that's really long and arduous uh, if, if that comes up and it's necessary for the sake of transparency. But for the sake of the message, remember the video years ago where I pulled a cop over? We did, I released that whole video and it was like 16 minutes long or something. It was pretty much the whole encounter. And it was good and it was getting attention and it was kind of long. Then, one of, my, one of my marketing friends in photography said, dude, you need to like a, a three or four minute version of that video. So I like buckled down and I made the five minute version that most of you have seen that was on the front page of Yahoo, that was literally viral all over the world and that's still going viral in its own way. I mean, every now and then I'll be on Facebook and I'll get tagged and here's a new version of the video that's been pirated from my YouTube and uploaded that has two or three million more views. That video collectively just online, not including mainstream news, probably has I'm gonna say 20 million views probably, because there's probably about 10 million just on my versions of that particular video of me pulling over the cop. That was the one in 2014. And it, we raised an international conversation with that about unmarked cars, right? So for the record, you know, regarding people taking my videos, if I'm doing a video that's like I'm making my living on, like an, an educational video, I don't like people taking it. I don't mind people taking my YouTube videos um, and repurposing them. It's, it's really not, it, it tech, legally it doesn't fall under fair use if you take someone's videos and re-upload them to get to build your own page and build your own channel. It's not your content. I don't really get offended by it though because I want the message to get out. So that's the main thing. I mean, sure, I like my channel growing. Um, the only thing I ask when people repurpose, you know, take the whole video, right? Um, I'm not into being a Nazi about those sort of things because I really want the message to get out. I just, I would like it if, if they give me credit, right? If a page that has millions of followers downloads the video from my channel and puts it on, on their page, which is getting growth for their page, at least give me credit for it. Anyways, that's copyright is a different discussion, okay? What I wanna talk about is how you get that video out, all right? now. The nutshell that I'm getting at here, and I know we're kind of dragging, but this is a video for those of you that really care and you really want to improve your message. I talk a lot in the education videos about uh, keeping it principled, about controlling your narrative, about standing up, about being bold, about learning to uh, connect with people, looking them in the eye, talking to them, learning to communicate, not being afraid, all that kind of stuff. So we're not gonna go into that too much today. I wanna talk about getting the video done because I'm telling you guys, in most of my videos, far and away, the hardest part, thanks guys, is getting the video edited. Because sometimes I'm spending, there's videos that I'm spending hours on just working with the audio. So this is Premiere Pro that I'm in right now. This is my main editing uh, area. And you can see that I'm running two mod monitors. There you guys are chatting you can see yourself chatting over on that screen there and it's also my second monitor for editing i don't know if it causes some kind of a time loop or a vortex that you guys are looking at yourself chatting but we're gonna hope that's that's not a problem okay so i got a video i've imported videos from a memory card right i just did that today 
and I do it for activism, but I also film projects for, for reviews and, and stuff on my adventure channel. In fact, I'm going to be doing more reviews on, on adventure products and outdoor products and things like that. And so a few of the, those may show up on this channel, but most of that kind of content is going to go on my adventure channel, my travel channel, my photography channel, which is uh, uh, youtube.com slash Syme Studios. And I'm working on building that channel. So if you guys want to help me out, I'm actually going to here, youtube.com youtube.com slash Syme Studios, all right? Should be that other one. I'm gonna put that in the chat. If you guys wanna help me out by growing that channel, I would appreciate it, because that's actually my day job, is my photography stuff. That channel is the one that actually helps me uh, survive, all right? Helps me keep this channel going. And uh, that's one that we're expanding. And there's going to be some fun stuff on there, even if you're not a photographer, because I'm going to be doing some reviews. In fact, I just filmed a review for some bike racks today that I use on the van and compared a couple of two, a couple of things, because I spend a lot of time outdoor. Thanks. Thanks, guys. When we edit a video, okay, see how I'm talking now? This is what you don't do if you want a viral video. This video I'm making right now will not be viral. You guys can share it. You can spread it for people that are interested. Like, subscribe, all that. That's great. But this video right now will not be viral. The reason is because it's a discussion. It's an ongoing dialogue. The longest video I've ever had far and away that went viral was the the final four standoff at the Oregon Refuge when we had David Fry on the phone and, and he managed to pull that call off and get it out and we were live streaming that to the world and like 70,000 people were watching live and we thought they were going to die. That was so edge of your seat intense and some of you remember that. It was so edge of your seat intense, thanks guys, that people watched, all right? And you guys remember that. If you don't, it's on the channel. It has millions of views. But it doesn't fit the mold of, of a viral channel. It's, it's like everybody was, was – that's a crazy story. I have a video telling the story on, the, on this channel too, telling the story of what that was like. Different, different topic. The point is we don't monologue like we're doing right now if we want a viral video. And that's what I see most people do. So there's nothing wrong with a monologue. I'm interacting with you guys, we're having fun, and the monologues are kind of for your friends and your core fans, followers, whatever, okay? A monologue like this is not what you do if you want a video to spread. Now this video I did last week, they don't all have to be edited this much, right? I've been doing a more vlogging style where there's more cuts and fill footage and stuff like that, but let me explain to you guys a little bit about This and and yeah, somebody mentioned short, short, uh, block, short monologues. Short monologues can be very powerful, but at that point you are editing yourself. So sometimes my short monologues, I'm forcing myself to be within a three to five minute time frame. Sometimes my short monologues, like the one I did for the Fourth of July, do have a little bit of cutting to get rid of the fluff, so they're very tight. We're going to talk about tight editing. I'm in Premiere Pro. You can get Premiere Elements, which is like a $100 program. Premiere Pro, I pay every month to use this software, okay? And it's not huge. A lot of people do it, but it's $30 to $50 for the creative suite. Uh, my audio editing software is Isotope RX Advance, which is probably the best audio restoration software in the world. There's a ton of good audio software out there. In fact, some of it comes with the Adobe Creative Suite and this subscription right here. Here's the problem. A lot of times with activism in particular, I'm dealing with restoring audio. You will see videos I put out with cops where you hear everything and I make sure to the best of my ability that you can. And let me just give you an example of that. Let me go to this video we did of Officer Kennedy. Then this, this was not that terrible of audio, okay? But it still needed some work so you guys could hear him. Let me show you. Let me pop the camera off for just a moment here. Let me show you this. This right here, this is, these are the clips. These are the clips from that video I posted this week, okay? Here's all the clips, the audio files, all this different stuff. There's like 20, 20 pieces in there, and that makes up this, which is all these cuts in the timeline. Now, I could have done one video of my interaction with Officer Kennedy, okay? It was a fairly short encounter. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with that in certain instances. So you can do that. And if it's short, if it's a five minute encounter or something, that's fine. But sometimes you need more to the narrative. I have a short encounter maybe with an officer, but I won't explain what's happening, okay? 
So what is happening? You got all this stuff. Well, there was one main encounter with the officer. I pulled up, I started making a video, right? And I did my little monologue like I do, explaining to people what's happening. Always explain to people. Don't just show, uh, narrate what's happening. I mean, I'll be standing there looking at the police officer who's harassing me and I'll take the time to turn around to the camera. Now let's watch a little bit. I've got to check the PO box. That's where people send most, most of I'm going to run through this video and how I edited it and I'm gonna to explain to you guys what I did here. This is a little bit more intense than I do some of my videos. And so I'm not saying one way is one or the other, but I'm gonna come back to the topic on the audio. I know we're kind of all over the place around here. Um, but this is one of those uh, let's dig into it kind of videos. All right, so I'll watch your comments over here. Listen to hate mail, that's what we send it. You see this opening scene. I'm checking my PO box. And this is I'm giving a shout out to people in prison that are sending me letters, letting you guys know about people like Jeff Winehouse, James Hamilton, and I'm showing these cool thing he made. So it's kind of a lead in. This would be more of a modern style vlog, right? All my activism videos aren't like this. And so if I have a super intense scene, a lot of times it'll just be a short video of just what happened, right? But if I want to tell a story to get a story out there to help build a narrative, this is one of the ways to do that. And you'll see lots of people. You guys watch videos on YouTube all the time that are done in this format. They have that open, middle, close. They have um, a, an opening, a conflict, and a resolution, right? They're built. Look at, look at uh, vloggers like Casey Neistat or, or Rhett and Link or you know, guys that might just be entertainers, but at the same time, they know how to tell a story. Don't mistake learning from people who are YouTube entertainers to tell a story, guys. And if you think about this, this is what I see all the time. Most people are trying to get their story out and they're doing it like I'm doing it. They're just monologuing for 30 minutes, right? You're not gonna go viral that way. You go viral by telling a powerful story that has an open middle close, right? It has a setup, a conflict, and a resolution. That's how storytelling works. It's not about manipulating the story, it's about telling the story. So you could say, I have a video of police abusing. That's great, build that narrative because that video of the police abusing you is gonna be the most powerful thing in your story. Then you have the people that say, police abuse me, but I have no video. And I'm like, okay, we'll tell your story. So they go online and they make, it, most of them don't even do it. They want somebody to do it for them. I say, you need to tell people your story. You need to stop being afraid. Expose the local corruption that the police did to you. Sometimes they go and they tell their story and that's great. That's a huge uh, hurdle for a lot of people. But, a lot of times they get on there and they ramble for 30 minutes. So their story doesn't have a lot of power. Then you have the people that kind of start getting this and they're like, oh, wait a minute, I need to tell my story in under 10 minutes, all right? Then you take it to the next level and you say, I need to tell my story in five minutes and I need to do it clearly and concisely and explain that it's not just about me. I need to show people that that whole narrative is about all of us. It's about justice, it's about liberty, it's about love, okay? Setup, conflict, resolution. So the conflict is already there in our world. What you see in this video, the conflict was created by the local thief, Patrick Kennedy, robbing people on the street in my town. The armed robbery that he commits and that the Afraid of Police Department commits and that your police departments commit. The setup is what we're gonna see now. We already had the conflict. The conflict in, in activism's case usually comes first. Then we say, how can we, how can we educate people to show this conflict and get it to reach out there? And yes, maybe be a little entertaining along the way because the bottom line is if you don't entertain most people, they're not going to watch it. It's unfortunate, but unless it's something horrible, it's kind of true. Let's watch. I'm doing a set. A little bit of music. This is a full edit. This is my secrets, guys. This is my secrets. But to get Here I'm showing for Schmong for the new baby, isn't that? You made that in prison. That's cool. Straight from a veteran. So what am I doing here? I'm opening up, giving you guys some time to get settled, grab your coffee, and watch, right? But I'm also showing, I'm giving shout outs to people that I know in prison, while at the same time talking about how bad the prison system is. I'm setting up by reminding us where we are in our world. The prison system. They are so resourceful in those prisons. It's it's kind of amazing, but it's, it's so sad. I was just heading to this dude. What just happened here is I opened up by reminding people that the people in prison are victims. Now, there's people in prison that have done bad things, but virtually all of those people have been denied due process. 
and are not lawfully proven guilty, which makes them a victim at this point. Part of our setup. Now we switch to a victim right here live on the street. Here's this scene of me driving up, doing a setup. Now, a lot of my videos, I'm not doing this much, but I'm, I'm getting better at doing video. And sometimes I'm like, hey, I can do a little more. I'm not in jail. I'm not, I'm not wounded, right? So let's do some, some footage. And what you, you'll see as we go through here, I've done this little setup, but you're seeing a lot of B-roll here. B-roll is when you take and do some, some B-roll. You do some secondary footage showing where you were, showing where the car was parked, showing cars driving by, showing you driving up, right? Why? Because it's visual. You're helping to people to place a mental picture of what's happening to set up your story so that they can personally relate to your story or to the story of whoever you're explaining. You want people to connect emotionally with your story because we're emotional people. The things happening in the world are emotional things, but on the internet and on Facebook, a lot of times they're not real. The people dying, the people suffering, it's not very real to people. And it's our job to love our neighbors and make that real by telling people stories, by being willing to stand up. So what do we see here? We see Gavin and he's like, oh, there's a cop. Deal and there's an extortioner, looks like local boys found somebody to try and harass and collect. Okay, so you see this. I mean, I've got B-roll of me on an activism scene and, I, and you've got B-roll of a camera sitting on the ground and my tires rolling up to it, right? I was actually kind of proud of this scene because I had to mark mentally where my phone, the one that you're watching this video from right now, I had to mark mentally where it was so I didn't run my phone over and ruin a $1,000 cell phone, which is my essential tool for filming. Almost all my activism videos are done on a cell phone. My other videos, my more production-oriented videos in my day job are done on better cameras because I have the time to set those up. Activism is not planned. Usually it tends to be by the seat of the pants, at least for me. But you see, I'm pulling up, right? I'm doing a setup. You, you sense the idea that I'm driving up. Look at there's my tires. They're still pretty good. I do a lot. I hammer my tires, guys. These were just replaced um, this spring, maybe? No, last summer, I think. Almost a year on those now. He's got some of them. It's Pat Canby. He's one of the local extortioners. He knows I keep an eye on it, though. Now, you see what I'm doing? People always say, don't talk to cops, right? Well, I'm introducing, I'm setting up the conflict that's already happening. Kennedy's already engaged in this stop, okay? Kennedy's already engaged in this stuff. The officer's already harassing. He's, he's, he's already about writing the ticket, I think. I'm kind of late, you know? A lot of times if I show up early, they'll run away and leave the person alone because they don't want to deal with me. He's already in, he, the, the robber here, the thief is already invested. He's already set up his theft and he needs to complete it now to save face at the very least. So what do I do? I pull up, I park the truck so I'm not falling under some ridiculous law about filming or holding a phone while driving and I'm breaking some law. I mean, I try to tread carefully so they don't have anything on me, right? Their laws are fake, but I'm still going to try to avoid fines, jail, etc. Wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Um, what, I'm, I'm just gonna check the chat here. And by the way, if you guys wanna, if you guys wanna buy me a cup of coffee, you can use the super chat, and you can. It'll put your chat up at the top. You can pay a dollar or two and put your chat up at the top. Um, is there? Is everybody behaving in the comments here? I'm trying to see the comments. I see. Uh, we have. Looks like we have a fake law teacher in here, and maybe he'll learn something. If if you teach, uh, if you teach. Uh, anything regarding this criminal justice system being the law in America, then you, you uh, if you teach the police as being the law, then you teach fake law. Um, and so come to my channel and channels like mine and learn, learn real law. So somebody asked, okay, I'm just looking at questions. Um, the super chat, you click the little dollar chat, the super chat at the bottom of the screen and there's some way that you can, you can follow it through. So, um, Thank you, Yake. I definitely don't need to come to a class that, that, teaches, that teaches fake law. I'm, I'm pretty well versed in the law, but always wanting to learn more 
but I have yet to meet I shouldn't say that. I've maybe met one or two lawyers ever that had any concept of of law. And I certainly have not met a criminal justice professor or a law school teacher that was teaching the law. Maybe they exist. I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt. So let's dig in here. I don't want to get sidetracked. Let's talk about the video. Um, where were we? Okay. I'm at the scene. Now you notice what I'm not doing in this video. Okay. What I'm not doing is just sitting there pointing the camera out the window. That's okay to get yourself acquainted with filming police and stuff, but it's not going to make a big narrative. You've probably seen a video that was 30 minutes long of some guy filming the police, and you never got to the end of it because nothing was really happening, and they didn't edit out the 10-minute gaps, right? They just posted the whole thing. It's okay to learn to edit a little bit. You don't have to get this extreme. You can get the basic version of this software, which is Premiere Elements. Uh, if you have a Mac, you, you probably already have iMovie on there for free, and you can do basic editing in that. Essentially, an edit is simply all about, it's not so much about the software, it's about understanding the concept of setup conflict re resolution, open, middle, close, presenting your message, okay, and making that message simple and concise. That's why you're cutting the video is to get rid of the fluff, to get rid of the empty dead space, to do your opens. So I did these setup clips after the initial conflict, guys. I said, oh, I had a conflict today. I'm gonna go do a setup and we're gonna make a vlog about this. It wasn't planned. It's good to keep an eye on right? So now we go through. Now I'm explaining what he's doing. Now he comes back and I have my opportunity for a conversation. Who are you harassing, kid? I make no bones. I don't pretend he's a good guy. I don't say, oh, officer, thank you for your service. I'm just observing to make sure you do your job. I already know he's not doing his job. He's out there committing armed robbery, okay? He's, he's, he's a crook. He's an extortioner. Harass and collect. I know Kennedy is not an oath keeper. I know he doesn't defend people's rights. He violates people's rights. So I'm not going to pretend. We need to start... We need to start treating bullies and thugs like bullies and thugs so they at least know. And I think I talked about that in this video. Thank you, Omaha Cop Block. Keep speaking out. Um, get those cameras going in Omaha. Listen, and I hope you guys will, will learn from this. I'm not saying you got to do this with every video, but these concepts that we're talking about, keeping it simple, keeping your message simple, will work for every video. Now you might do an encounter like this. And literally I was just walking around with my phone afterwards pulling B-roll, right? I got an iPhone 7 Plus is what I'm using on that front. There's lots of good cameras, but I like that one because it has a zoom built in because iPhones have always been very reliable, which is critical when you're in dangerous activism situations. And because I, I, the newer version had the image stabilization and I do want the best image quality that I can. Okay, you can do things like body cameras. Those are great, but you don't actually get to point them around very well. Body cameras are good backup cameras. Dash cameras are good backup cameras. They're protect you kind of cameras for if you know you're going into a situation and you can turn on two cameras just in case one fails, you have another one. In the video where I get arrested, there was multiple cameras and one of those cameras was a camera in my pocket, okay, that this camera, different phone at the time, this camera was in the courtroom involved in a conflict and I ran into the courtroom and I, you'll see me pull a secondary camera out of my pocket because we knew we were in a hostile situation in a courtroom that day. And I won't explain that video because you can go watch that video and it's the one of Gavin Stein getting arrested. It's not hard to find. Okay, so what are we doing? Setup, we've gone to setup. Now we're at the conflict, okay? Who are you harassing? You. See, he never, most of the time the officers don't really have a response, okay? When you call them out, when you tell them what they are, they don't know what to do. If society told these cops what they really were, most of them would quit their jobs. They could not deal with it. The only way they can deal with thinking they're okay is because they genuinely think they're the heroes, guys. Because we in society keep pretending, we keep shaking their hands. I'm not saying be... be Unprincipled. I'm not saying spit on them or, or hurt them. I'm saying love them enough to tell them the truth, you guys, to tell them they're a criminal thug. All right, let's keep watching. Let me, let me expand this just a little bit. Did you come to visit me? Well, I'm seeing what you're giving this guy trouble for. 
So I'm controlling the narrative. I'm not answering his questions and he knows that. That's why he's not gonna answer any questions to me. If you did this in your town right off and the cops didn't know you, as long as you kept it cool and daylight does help, you probably wouldn't get in trouble. But I, but I can assure you that there'd be three or four other cops around in moments if you were in an area where the cops weren't used to this. The cops in my town and in my county and in my state and stuff are used to it because I've called them out a lot of times. Most of the cops that I deal with, most of the cops in my county, even a lot of the cops in my state would know me by name if I drove up to their stop because I've done that much activism. And it's okay to get to that point. Doesn't mean that they're good guys, but it does give you a buffer a little bit because they know you and they know you're not there to, to use violence, right? I'm there to expose their violence. What's that? Always, always speak candidly with them. I don't pretend that they're the big So we're going through and I'm explaining what's happening, right? I'm not just sitting still. I'm explaining what's happening. And then he comes, he finishes his extortion, whatever Pretty good. There. You're just giving the locals. And I'm very candid, almost cavalier and mocking because I know I have a lot of experience with this officer. And he's, I actually used to take photos for this guy when he was like, 20 years old at the racetrack and then he became a cop and an extortioner and I realized that and now I called him out, right? Because like like any good neighbor would do. You doing any good or are you just giving the locals trouble? This is like you would talk to Barney Fife because that's kind of what this guy is, except for he's worse because he hurts people more, more often and he robs people more. But if you wanted to make a comparison, like this is your Barney Fife and you're just gonna be like Floyd, right? Like knock it off, stop harassing people. Now you're me trouble. So he's no, trying to get away. You stop? This is, happens almost all the time when you assert yourself. He's going to try What's and get away. Uh, you see me. Now, again, this is B-roll. I didn't have a camera laying on the ground. I recorded this after because I wanted to add the production value. And this is not essential. I'm not saying you guys got to do all these different cuts to make a good video. Again, the essence is open, middle, close, set up, conflict, resolution, story, simple, short. That's really what we're getting at, and you use editing software to make that happen. However, if I'm going, going whole hog, you'll see more like this. Let's see here. We got some trolls we need to deal with. So what we're doing, guys, remember, don't let anybody pretend like, oh, these police are, what would we do without police? They're protecting the law. What would we do without law enforcement officers? Guys, these guys aren't law enforcement officers. These are robber blue line thugs. If they were enforcing the law, they wouldn't be robbing people. They would be stopping the human traffickers and the judges and the corrupt politicians and the murderers and the executioners that are in their precinct. That's what they would be doing if they were law enforcement. They're not law enforcement, they're organized crime. And so we need real peacekeepers, we need real law enforcement, but stop pretending that these are. We need to stop letting them pretend. Okay, so what are we doing? Now we're in the conflict, but I came back later and still recorded some B-roll. What kind of traffic violation? See, I'm running up to him, he's trying to run. Okay, you can see him turning the steering wheel, he's heading out. Now you guys can see this whole video, I posted it this week on the channel. Hey, 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 I got a question. Now you're seeing as we go through here, you're getting the context of it, but but there's some cuts to make it more brief. Now right here, you're seeing pretty much all. Why do they always run? Okay, sometimes when I'm interacting with a cop, I will turn the camera around and turn it on myself, okay? Part of the reason I edited this video the way I did is because it's not a super intense scene where people are going to jail or dying or anything like that. So on that kind of a scene, I wouldn't be quite as conversational. It would be much more serious and intense, like, like the guy the officer, the afraid of officer in the video I did this year that went viral where the officer was abusing the, the disabled man from the hospital. In that situation, I thought, well, this, this might turn into another Alton Sterling. This might turn into another police abuse. I have to make sure this man doesn't get hurt. So in that case, sure, I was still taking control of the conversation, but it wasn't as light as this is. So do things contextually, right? Now you see here as I'm walking up, and this is actually a cut. Sometimes I will just turn the camera around and talk, but this is a cut that I did afterwards to draw attention to the fact in this conflict that the police are always running from us when we question them. I question for you. Why do they always run? Okay. What? Love it or hate it, I thought it was kind of cool. 
question. What kind of trap? One question. I guess you can only ask one question, right? You notice I didn't say, okay, I'll only ask one question. Thank you for that. I completely ignored him and I continued persisting in my questions. Traffic violation. Expired text. Expired text. So he just admitted, right? When I first talked about this and I posted a screenshot of it, people were like, oh, that guy's trailer is unsafe. He should have been stopped. He was probably moving the trailer like down the block. You know, I mean, it doesn't look like he's going on a road trip. But he just, by answering this question, by me pushing for the question, he's trying to get rid of me. See, a lot of cops will be like, oh, I can't tell you that, which is total nonsense. It's public record. They can tell you. So I pushed quickly. I urged for the question, and I got the answer to why it was really stopped, right? Had I gotten a vague answer, people would have been saying, oh, that was a real stop, right? That, that guy needed to be stopped. But we got the answer. Expired tags. The reason the man was stopped was... For one reason, profit, extortion. He was committing theft. That's the only reason. And by getting that admission, we just took the narrative. Is he's parked in front of his house. Now he's upset. He doesn't know how to deal with me. He's dealt with me before. He knows how this goes. He doesn't have any reason to arrest me or anything. It doesn't mean they always won't, but I'm not doing anything wrong. It's, you know, Saturday afternoon and I'm just on the street. You don't know that. Uh, okay. Is it, now, see, at the moment, as, see, remember, my mind's going too. I'm trying to look at what's happening, stay safe, look at the guy in the trailer, the cop, make sure he doesn't fritz on me and shoot me. So my wheels are turning 100 miles an hour while this is happening. And there's, there's all these computations going on in my little brain trying to figure out, okay, what's the best way to handle this in real time? We're going to do this in real time. So... I'm kind of throwing stuff out there. I thought the guy might have actually been parked in his car and he was writing him a ticket for being parked on the street with expired tabs because they will write tickets for that. These guys are such low life thieves that they will actually write people tickets for their parked vehicles. And so I threw that out there thinking he might have lived here. I think I was actually incorrect on that. And so in part, I was like, when I edited this video, because people love to pick me apart, I was like, man, maybe I should just cut that part out. And I'm like, no, that's stupid. I want to show them the whole conversation. I'm not afraid of what I said. I said nothing wrong. But people will actually pick me apart for saying, what do you mean? He lives there, right? Because I was, I didn't, may not have had all the information correct and how, or I stated it wrong, right? Even stating something wrong, I will get harangued and trolled for because that's how anti-law the police supporters are. They just want to make you look bad. All right? So, it's okay. It's okay to show your faux pas, right? And it, this wasn't really a big faux pas. It was just we were having a conversation. Really what I was trying to do is get information out of it. By bringing things up that I thought were the case, right? I'm throwing out my, my theories on what's happening here. And by doing so as questions and statements, he's responding. I'm getting information. Again, carry the conversation. Do not let them control the conversation. Continue. Is it illegal to park? Is it illegal to park on the street? See, and so I'm throwing out these questions that are valid questions. They may not even all be directly related to his stop, okay? But, uh, but it's okay because we're asking questions of things that they do in extortion all the time. Omaha cop block, thank you again. I don't know if it's, that's the same Omaha cop block or if it's a different one, but... Uh, you guys keep fighting. Let's keep up the good work and love the police enough to tell them that they're criminals. How about that? <laughs> Take care. I, I haven't finished talking to you yet. I'm gonna talk to you. Wait up. See, I want them in the situation where I'm in control of the conversation and they want to escape from me. I don't want them to have a reason to stay and find something wrong. I'm, I want the conversation to be moving forward and surging so effectively that they don't have time to stop and say, what can I harass Gavin for? Is his tire illegal? Is he parked wrong, right? I don't want that. I'm never talking to you. Come on, hold on. Now I'm actually running beside him. This is a little daring, but again, if, if I was in a strange city, I might not do this. It depends on the situation. I try, first of all, I always, you know, I always seek God for protection in these things. Um, second of all, I, I just try to gauge the situation, right? If they look like they're about to kill me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and be like, whoa, calm down, you know, hands out, things like that. You want to keep yourself safe, all right? 
So he could have stayed and answered questions, but he knew that those questions would expose his corruption. Oh, my God, why you? I answer you? See, he's getting a little angry now. He actually stopped the car. Cops like to do this thing. They're taught these little tactics, like raising their voice, like using hand gestures. They're taught these bully tactics. Diane, thank you. They're taught these bully tactics to try and intimidate you. And they very much are tried to try and intimidate you. They are intimidating, especially if it's dark and there's three or four of them. They'll do things like putting their hands on their gun. Cops do things as a matter of course. They're trained to do things as a matter of course that you would quite literally go to prison for, okay? You have people in the Bundy trials right now that are getting a complete kangaroo court. Go over to Ammon Bundy's page. He went live today and watch that uh, today over on Ammon Bundy's page on Facebook. And these cops are trained to be psychos. Texas is a perfect example of that because they know they can get away with it because the Texas people are so enslaved that they worship the police in Texas, okay? So Texas cops are some of the worst in the nation, but that doesn't mean that any of the other cops are actually good. Some are more polite, some are less polite, but they're all taking part in extortion and, and human trafficking and prisons for profit and all that good stuff. These tactics, you look at like the Bundy Ranch, right? People are saying, people are going to prison for 60 years, right? Uh, Greg Burleson just got like 60 years. And if he doesn't get out of appeal, he will spend the rest of his life in prison, guys. He never raised a finger to anybody. He said some things on Facebook and he possessed a gun at a protest. That was it. And they convicted him with all these t crimes with with hurting people, with threatening people, right? Go look up what he was actually convicted with. Same with Jeff Winehouse. What they were convicted with had nothing to do with what happened. In fact, generally what people are convicted for is what the police did to them. I see this so often, all right? There is still, there's not hair on my forehead. That's, it's from the rubber stamp that I stamped myself with at the beginning of the video. So let's continue, right? He does this stopping thing where they jam on their brakes and it's to intimidate you. It's to, it's to infer in your subconscious that they're about to jump out and arrest you. That's what he's doing here. And he's using this tactic and it doesn't affect me, but beware of that. Cause it is a sign. It can be a sign that they're losing their temper. Um, you know, whether these officers are just psychos every day or they're hopped up on roids and it's making their, their mood and their temper out of control, we don't always know. But what we do know is police kill a thousand plus a year. The police in America are killing more than all terrorist organizations combined. All right? These are important things to know. Know how dangerous these cr criminals are. They make any of the mobster uh, stories from history probably look pretty much like pikers. I mean, this is such a large, organized syndicate of robbery and extortion and abuse. One question, I was polite. Is there a law that says I can only ask one question and you're not polite? See, again, I'm still making questions and statements. I'm not answering his questions. And he knows at this point, he's not even trying to answer questions because he wants to get out of there. He already knows this situation because he's been in it before. So I'm, again, throwing questions and I'm making statements. You're not polite. I'm reminding people during this conflict that this guy is the one that created this incident and he's the troublemaker. I want to know why you're giving the guy trouble. Goodbye, Gavin. Have a good one. Try I, can, I can only chase him so long. Ask people, okay? You. See how he says, I say try to ask for people and he says you too as he's driving away. Normally you wouldn't hear that much, but I've gone in and we have done audio editing. And so that's a little sidetrack we're going to look at real quick. I'm about to wrap this up, guys, because it's late. I'm going to go home and spend some time with my kids, but look at this. This is the extracted audio and you'll have to use to edit your audio uh, or raise the volume. On a basic level, your editing software will raise the volume of your audio and that can help. What I'm doing on the more on a lot of the activism stuff is far more advanced because I'm using this software, which is showing me a waveform. So this is a waveform of the actual software starting down uh, at the Hertz level. So I can actually look at this down here is is the low tones, um, you know, like this here, you can look at areas, you know, if there was wind, like this could be wind down here. So I'm identifying things in the audio. These are the high frequencies, the hissy ch sounds will be up here. So I can immediately not only look at my audio and then also see a traditional waveform, like you might see in a normal editor that just kind of shows the volume. But what I can do in here is I can do noise reduction. So I can select an area and reduce like engine noise, for example. Every audio clip in this, I think, was edited. Thanks, Omaha. Peace. So a lot of, usually what I'll do is reduce the noise and then I'll use a tool called um, 
a leveler, okay? And so a leveler is going to go in, and I'm going to say, if it's quiet, make it louder. If it's loud, make it quieter to give me an, a standardized waveform where things are audibly the same. The problem with this is if you have somebody across the street, a cop is saying something, right? And he's across the street. Now, he's really quiet and you're really loud, right? If you just raise the volume of that, you're also raising all the background noise. So sometimes it doesn't help. So in... A serious edit where you really want to do audio restoration where it's important or I, I'm set up for it so I kind of do it as a matter of course but sometimes I'm actually doing audio forensics I did this on some of the stuff of Lavoie and things like that when they murdered Lavoie Finicum where you you go to great lengths to reduce all the background noise and there's various noise reduction tools in Isotope RX this is this is probably the best in the world right now for audio mastering and restoration it's not a multi-track editor it's for fixing and working and improving single tracks on audio. There's different editors for multi-track. On a basic level, you can get a free app like the Levelator and you'll drag an audio file into it that you've extracted from your video editor and you will even out the levels. That can work really good, but it doesn't necessarily account for noise and stuff like that. So in intense situations, and you'll see this in some of my videos, sometimes you'll be listening and you'll see where the audio kind of develops a tinnier quality, a lower quality, because there was damage in the audio, or there was restoration done in the audio, or there was a wind noise that I cut out. Wind is very hard to remove. Uh, we also use this in professional video editing, because if I'm just doing a dialogue or a workshop, I want to edit out maybe background noise, or rustling from my clothes on my lapel mic, things like that. This software, this is Isotope RX, uh, this costs about $1,300 for this piece of software, okay? It is worth every penny. It's absolutely incredible. It will fix clipped audio. It'll fix, it'll do noise reduction. It'll do leveling. The new version will now do wind reduction. But originally I bought Isotope for clipped audio because traditionally when you clipped your audio where it's, you know, peaks out at the top, uh, it's ruined. This will fix clipped audio like nothing I've ever seen, not even close to anything I've ever seen. And I bought, I started with the basic version. The basic version is only about 300 bucks on this, okay? And this is the advanced version, which has some more stuff. But the basic version does the clipping and, and noise reduction and things like that, okay? So I'm not telling you guys go buy this software. These guys are not sponsors of my channel by any means, okay? I'm just saying these are tools that I use. You will probably want to start out more basic with something like an Adobe subscription, which comes with an audio editor as well that will do some of this stuff. Uh, it comes with... Uh, with uh, Encore, which is an audio suite that comes if you're an Adobe subscriber, or you might just want to buy something off the shelf that's cheap, right? Like, like Premiere Elements, which is like a hundred bucks, or maybe you're going to use iMovie on your computer, and then you're just going to find some basic audio editor, maybe even get an open source one. Uh, like I forget the name of the open source audio editor that's really popular. Um, and somebody shout it out if you remember it. There's a few of them out there, but there's some good ones out there. They're harder to use, things like that. But uh, hey, thank you, Diane. I appreciate it. So, audio. That's what you're hearing here is I've replaced audio and fixed up audio. And that leveling your audio in a police activism situation can be very important. Sometimes if you have something really important, right? Maybe not an everyday situation like this. But if you have an arrest or something really important, you need to get out a murder by cop, something like that. You, if you don't have the software, you might want to go hire somebody that does just to restore that piece of audio. Because that can be very important that people can hear and audio forensics work can go to great lengths to make sure i mean sometimes what people said can be life or death and so knowing how to edit audio can be important but i'm not trying to overwhelm you guys all right where are we at rv okay now the cop has left the conflict is over what's the resolution the resolution in this case is i can't fix the guy that was just robbed i can support him in what i say i can try and spread the message so that you guys speak out and spread the message and shame these robbers for what they're doing and so that you go out and repeat that. So the resolution is me talking about what just happened and asking you guys to go stand as He's well. probably trying to move it from one point to the other. They're harassing. So you'll see some cuts here, right? Because I probably actually recorded 15 minutes of video, right? Because the neighbor guy came out, I'm talking, the neighbor guy starts walking out and I'm like, uh-oh, is he mad? Is that you don't give up? And he wasn't. He was coming to give me a shout out. Oh, I just want to say appreciate it. Okay. 
but we talked for 10 minutes, right? And I could have made this video really long, but there was no need. I put some highlights in there, kind of, you know, a shout out to him, showing that I at least have some local support here, that there are other people that care, because that's important to show that. <laughs> then I'm going I mean, through. Like I'm, I'm gonna look around. <laughs> then I finished the resolution by putting out an effort to try and go find the officer that just tried, uh, ran from me, that eluded me, right? Because we are in a police chase here. I just happen to not be speeding at 100 miles an hour through town like the police do. So I look around town, I go check at the station, he's, he's not there, it looks like they've hidden away at the station, and I close it off by reminding you guys of the narrative that when we speak out, when we stand up, when we love people enough to speak out, it makes a difference. And through all that, I understand I didn't show you how to use the editing software because I don't even know what editing software you're using. What I showed you, so you would be in here with these tracks. And for example, in Adobe Premiere, I'd go to C, and that's the razor tool, and I would say, oh, I don't need this 10 seconds here. So I would cut and cut and select and delete, and I'd pull that part out. I'm going to undo that because I don't actually want that part out. So you can see a video editor is multidimensional, right? So if you edit a photo, you brighten it, you darken it, things like that. Video is a lot more complicated because you're stacking, you're layering, you're starting one track where another ends, and so you actually have this multi-track timeline. The audio is on the bottom half here, and the video clips are on the top, and so all these little segments are video clips. You don't have to do it this way every time. These are just ways that you can do it. So sometimes it's just one clip, and I just trim the ends off and edit the audio and put it out for you guys. Other times, hey guys, thanks for being here. I know this one's long, but uh, you know, this is just kind of a, for, for a help or maybe for you guys, hopefully it helps some of you improve your own message. So this all takes time. You don't have to go to this extent. You don't have to use this crazy software. These are just things you can do. How much you edit it is up to you. You don't have to beat it into the ground. Don't try and make a boring clip super exciting by editing and editing forever. It's probably not going to work. Take a clip that might be a little bit long and add to it right by adding some fill footage if you have time by maybe just doing a closer where you talk to the camera sometimes you might get done with an incident and you realize hey i need to explain to people what i just saw here because they might not have seen everything in the video and you'll see me do that a lot a lot of times my cut is as simple as trim the ends off the main cut and then cut in an ending clip where i'm just explaining what just happened and why it's important and what people should do about it a lot of times i'm just adding a resolution on the end when the conflict is over and the police officer runs away which they usually do because they're cowards, okay? So, how large your project is up to you. You guys wanna see something? I'll show you something. Let me see if I have it here. Show you one little, one little thing. It's in this one. You guys seen the Bundy story? It's, it's the project that I worked on with Airman last year to get their story out. And a lot of clips, right? Because it involved Bunkerville, it involved Oregon, it involved all this stuff. And so it took me months to pull all that together and thousands of miles. I mean, I literally was driving around the country getting what I needed. Uh, and, and then Ammon did the narrating on it. And so Ammon did the narrating. This here, guys, this is the Bundy story. Let me pull the camera off. I'm going to show you guys this. Thanks, Bearcat. This, this is the Bundy story. This took forever, okay? And I'm not tooting my own horn, I'm just saying that, you know, I am proud of this, but I'm saying that sometimes you go to greater lengths than others, and it's worth it, okay? Sometimes you do that, because we needed all these clips and information and audio to tell that story, and to make that story really come alive. This is probably, this is one of the top two or three com most complex project that I've ever done. And it took a long time. And that's okay because it got that message out there. And of course, I'm still the bad guy, I'm sure, in the minds of the trolls and the, and the, the loyalists that, you know, that think I hate cops. But the point is, apply what you do. Edit your video in a way that's appropriate. Not to be deceptive not to change the message, but to give that open middle close, that conflict, that resolution, conflict, set up conflict resolution. Tell people a story, be a storyteller. Storytelling is how things go viral. Emotions are how things go viral. 
uh, things that are shareable, things that make people feel like it's important to share and so they're, they're doing people a service for sharing it. These are the kind of things that go viral. There's a book, and I've actually just been reading a book on this recently called Contagious, and it's an intense study of how things go viral. And if you want to study the marketing aspect of how things go viral more, uh, check out that book. But the bottom line is actually very simple. If you want your message to get out, don't drag it out. Don't do an hour monologue like this if you want a viral video. Make it short, make it sweet, and use the most poignant points. Film the police officer while you're getting arrested. Show rather than tell later, if at all possible. If you got arrested or your friend got arrested, do a public records request. There's a video on my channel for doing a public records request. Do a public records request and get a hold of the body cam or the dash cam videos so now you can tell it, you can open it and close it, but in the middle you can actually show the conflict instead of just telling about the conflict. Most of those things usually involve fairly basic editing, sometimes correction of the audio, but mostly just getting a hold of the footage that shows the conflict and adding a setup and a resolution, an opener and a closer on the end. In essence, guys, that's storytelling. That's how the movies you watch are made. It's how the commercials you watch are made. It's how, <laughs> it's how stories have been told for thousands of years. Hey, thanks, guys. Guys, I'm going to wrap it up. That is, in brief, how to make a viral video, some tips for how to edit. Go back if you need to, watch this again. We could do a whole other video on educating software use, and frankly, that would probably be on my photography channel, which I will link my other channel right here in the comments. Uh, YouTube.com slash Sime Studios is my photography and adventure channel where I do more, more casual things, reviews, and uh, we're, we're trying to grow that channel, actually, so we kind of have two distinct uh, channels in here. Uh, go follow that one. If you guys like what I do, like and subscribe to that. Spread the word. And, uh, you know, just speak out. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor enough to tell them the truth, even if they're a cop. And we don't want to be hateful, vindictive. We want to, we want to give people, give these government officials the due process. <laughs> the due process they have denied us. It's now late. It's 930. It's okay because my kids do stay up pretty late. So I will go home. I'll have some dinner. I'll spend some time with the kids. By letting the kids stay up a little later, they sleep in more. And that means I don't have to get up and my wife doesn't have to get up very early. That's a child rearing technique that allows you to not be woken up at six in the morning by your kids, guys. I talk to people all the time. And they're like, oh yeah, our kids go to bed early. And I'm like, yes, but kids will only sleep so long. That's just the way it works. So therefore, if your kids are going to bed early, they're also waking you up early in the morning, which is great if you want to get up early. But if you don't want to get up early, it's probably not that great of a thing. If you want to sleep in, let the kids go to bed a little later, spend a little time with the kids at night, watch a movie with them, tuck them in, relax a little, go to bed, and get to sleep in. You guys catch all that? All right talking fast. Um, I actually have had to train myself to talk slow. So what you see in my speech patterns now has taken me years of practice. You will, you will find things if you start communicating and I'm asking you, please start communicating, start making videos, start doing activism. Find your niche. There will be something you're good at because your voice has power and start speaking out with principle and love and, and change the world. And we can, we can do this. We can do this, you guys. And so Apply some basic techniques. Find the things. Be willing to look at the deficiencies. You know, go to a Toastmasters speaking group and learn how to speak. Be willing to look at your own deficiencies and say, yeah, I need to talk slower. I need to say um less. I need to carefully think of the words that come out of my mouth before I say them. I need to use vulgarities less. What will give you the voice? What will give you the voice? And uh, I've been sleeping pretty good lately. And the dark rings are probably because I've been sick the past couple weeks. Um, but uh, anyways... I'm going to go, love your neighbor, speak out, God help us, we sure need it. You guys have a good night, and uh, spread the word, and check out my other channel, youtube.com forward slash Sime Studios. Take care, guys.